I met Crystal in an online dating app and quickly became her boyfriend. She pronounced her love for me over the app before she ever even saw me on camera for a video chat. I thought that was a little weird, but she also told me something I was perfectly okay with. She told me that she was a Satanist, but I knew a few Satanists, and all that means is that they don't worship God, they worship themselves. Their words, not mine. They don't eat babies or kill kittens. Crystal was one of these Satanists, but she told me she had a Tumblr dedicated to something about worshipping something. I wasn't too sure of what she was spatting, and I really didn't care or mind. I met her at first in the parking lot of a gas station, since she lived not too far from where I did. We started hanging out together, and I found that she was a very nice person, and she was very interesting. She found me interesting as an atheist, and pried all kinds of conversations out of me to learn more about me. It made for some really interesting conversations, and we opened each other's eyes on a few things in time, but we worked very well with each other. Well, over a course of six to eight weeks, we dated and just did things together. We became very close, and I moved into her house shortly afterwards. She was having issues with paying bills like a lot of people are. I wanted to help her out so her whole life wasn't just worrying about bills. We had a very good thing going on until one day, I got a call from my dad. My mother had passed away because of a disease and the funeral was set very soon. I had to drop everything and go. I told Crystal I had to go, and she begged me not to. I was wondering why she would ask such a thing of me, but I denied her and went anyways. I called out of work, and they were happy to oblige me the time off to go. I drove upstate and got to my parents' house. Dad was broken, and I spent a long time with him just to make sure that he was going to be able to handle this. Once the funeral started, lots of people showed up at the church that it was being held at, and a service was held for her. There were some very nice things said by her friends and loved ones. Once the funeral was over, she was to be cremated and given to all of us. So I stayed until that was done, and I brought her home. When I got home... Crystal asked me a bunch of questions about how it went, and I told her that even my mom's church friends were there to see her off. When I mentioned church, Crystal started complaining about it. I didn't understand what she was getting upset about until I realized that she was upset about me going into a church and getting contaminated. I was also confused as to why she would think this way. I told her to just drop the subject since she wasn't going to see it my way, and just leave it where it stood. Crystal started acting very strange over a few days, and once again, brought up the fact that I stepped foot in a church. She told me that she could feel the controlling energy off me, and that's when I started to tune her out. It was just a funeral. It's not like I stepped into some mystical vortex and got changed. One of those nights, I woke up in the middle of the night to her moving around too much. I quickly realized that she had tied me to a bedpost and had candles lit around the room. She was dressed in some robe-type shit, and I watched her pull out a large knife. Let me just stop here to remind you all that this is a true story. So if you're picturing a horror movie scene where some guy is about to get sacrificed by a devil worshipper, then you're good. So she jumped on the bed standing up with tears in her eyes, creating the running mascara effect thing, chanting some shit that I couldn't understand. Probably gibberish. I yelled at her to stop being stupid and untie me. She ignored me and then started yelling about my crime of dwelling in a Christian church and how I'd been contaminated by Christ. I struggled with the thing that she had me tied with and it came undone. She saw her opportunity slipping, so she went down for a stab and sliced open my side. It was a little cut, and it did ooze a little, but once I got the other one done in a few seconds, I grabbed Mom and ran out the door and got in my car. I left for the hospital to make sure I didn't have an infection. I then went to the police. 
I showed them the wound on my side and told them about the incident and made a report. I went back out to my car and I sat there in the police HQ parking lot and I said out loud to myself, well, that just happened. I was beside myself with how that went and I think it's safe to say that relationship was over with. Once they arrested her, that was it. That was attempted murder with a deadly weapon. I don't think anyone will have to worry about being sacrificed by her anymore. Maybe when she gets out way later on, but by then I'll be long gone and she'll never find me. I never told my dad about it because I'm sure that he wouldn't have been able to handle that, so I just left it off the table. The one Satanist who I consider a close friend even said that she had no right to call herself a Satanist if she was going to be like that. That wasn't a religion. That was just craziness. And she was out to kill someone for a long time, it seemed like. I just happened to be the closest person to her at the time. When I was in my early 20s, I made the mistake of getting online to find a girlfriend. It wasn't much of a hassle finding someone on some dating site, but in the real world, I had severe issues because of my disposition. I know now that I might not have been the greatest person, but I have since worked on that, if not only but to redeem myself for myself. I'm a wildly different person than I was then. That being said, I'm pretty sure that the girl I met on the dating website is still out there doing her thing and hasn't changed a bit. She messaged me first out of the blue, and I didn't give it any thought. I was pretty shallow after all. There was a very beautiful girl throwing herself at me, and I was absolutely going to take it. Right away she wanted to take me out to dinner and a date, so I jumped right on that and met her at this pretty decent restaurant. She paid for the entire thing, and we had a great time together. She was eccentric and energetic, which I really liked that about her. I felt that we got along very well. She was also pretty open about who she was, and that made me feel compelled to tell her everything I had. With her acting like this, I would have never guessed what was up her sleeve. The first date was the most memorable experience that I'd ever had. I found a woman my age that just seemed to be the best person I could have met. It's just that some people have hideous intentions that they don't show until it's far too late. I invited her over all the time to spend the night at my place, and she'd always be excited to come over. She really didn't like talking about her living situation, and I didn't think it was good to pry, but I kinda did anyway. I kept asking her what it was like and thought making small jokes would lighten her mood up about it. But after a while, she started suggesting that she moved in with me. Naturally, I jumped at the idea, and forgot all about wanting to know what she was living in. I was a bit selfish then. The only real information that I ever got was that she was living in a place with like 12 other people, and that was after we broke up. After I moved her in, I only saw her briefly in the morning and never at night. She told me that she had a job, but I couldn't go ambush her at her night job because when I got off my job, I was too dead tired to. I knew when she got home though, because she was kind of loud coming in and going to bed. She'd also always smell like smoke when she came in, but I always thought that was a bit strange as she said that she worked at a bar that didn't allow that inside. I also knew that she didn't smoke herself. I did, and I could still smell it on her. On the weekends, we would go out and do something like a date, but things were kind of getting dull and routine-like. I did fall in love with her, but she had other plans for us. So I did sometimes passively aggressively hint at help with the bills and all that, but she'd always just brush it off. She did pay for dates though, but at the time I didn't see that as an equivalent thing. I thought dates as recreational and fun, while bills were work and not fun, and we should both have shared them. Her ultimate plan for us started when she thought I wasn't home and invited a guy over. I had just come through the back door, and could overhear them in the kitchen talking about something that confused me. It sounded like they were negotiating on something illegal, 
but she mentioned my name and didn't want me to know something. I was furious that she was keeping secrets from me, but I slipped back out the door and left before I was detected. I contemplated and gaslighted myself on the small drive I took around the think. I thought to myself that she would never betray me, but I didn't know who that guy was. It could have been a family member or something, but I also convinced myself that there was a possibility that she was cheating on me. I didn't want to find out like this and not know how to approach the situation, so I stewed in it. I just let it build up until one day when she and I had an argument. In the middle of the argument, I brought up the fact that I heard her talking with some random guy in the kitchen and threw out some key points that I heard. Her demeanor changed all of a sudden, and she was like a whole other person. Sympathetic, apologetic, and she wanted to stop arguing right then and there. I thought it was weird for that change to happen, but I let it go. We did stop the argument, but that night as I went to sleep, I could feel her get up out of bed. I might have thought that she was just getting up to go to the bathroom, which does sometimes happen. I wasn't awake enough to care too much. The next morning, I woke up to see that she was missing. From what I was worried about the most, I thought she was planning to put a pillow over my face or something, but she might as well have. She took off in the night with my card and had withdrawn the most that she could out of my account and taken a bit of cash that I had saved up around the house. She also robbed me of a few valuable things that I never replaced. I found out through the grapevine that she was an addict, and she was known for playing the long game to get money out of guys. She never loved me, but she was willing to act like she did for a couple of dollars. Apparently, she never actually picked up a job and was going back and forth to the den to sell, which is why she would smell like smoke when she came home most of the time. Needless to say that I was heartbroken to find out all this from someone who could have said something if they already knew. I probably should have seen it myself from the start, but even then, I didn't know what to look for. I also heard that she wasn't my age either, but she was about 10 years older and had been doing this for most of her life non-stop. I also didn't know how to find her because she never actually gave me a real name. I thought it might have been her real name, but I never bothered to look at anything that she had to confirm that. I had no reason to think otherwise. So she disappeared with my money and broke me. The bank said that they couldn't replace the money since she had access to my card the way she did, but I was able to recover and just get back to my life in just weeks. The healing process took way longer than I'd liked, but that was to be expected, I guess. Out of trauma, I've stayed single and kept a tight lock on my stuff, but maybe one day I'll get back to dating again. I met a girl one day on Tinder that quickly became my best friend. Her name was Susan and she was 26 years old, a short blonde, and she had an awesome personality. I loved being around her. I was a short 25-year-old guy with dirty blonde hair myself. She was a pretty positive person from the day I met her. She lived with her dad, and we talked online for a few months before we actually met in real life. I was excited to meet her since she was relatively close. I would be meeting her with a few of her friends in a park downtown in her city. The 30-mile drive wasn't bad at all. So when I did meet her, she was in full cosplay and her friends were taking pictures of her for a website that I didn't recognize. I thought it was really cool of her to be into something like this. She talked to me enough to where she felt comfortable going out on our first date together that afternoon. We went around the city and ate at a little restaurant close by that had these little wrap sandwiches and walked around talking until it got dark. I think it went pretty well, and we got along well. Later on that same year, I started going out with her to cosplay events, and hanging out with her there. She was holding on to a thought that she'd had for a long while, and she told me while we were at one of those places. She was thinking that she was going to move closer to me. She had a decent enough job to where she could rent a place of her own. 
I loved hearing that idea, and I told her to go for it if she saw no issues with it. A few weeks later, she announced to me that she was moving down the street from me. Her job wouldn't have been a problem since they were just going to transfer her to that city. After she moved, we saw each other every day. My job fell through a little while after that, and I lost the place that I was renting. But I bunked up with a friend that lived nearby until I could get back on my feet. She asked me why I didn't just move in with her, and I told her I felt like I would have been intruding. We hadn't yet officially called ourselves a couple. We were only then just friends. I thought it might have been wrong for me to even ask. This is actually what set us up to become a couple. She asked me out, and then said come on over. It happened so fast I didn't even have time to process it all. So I moved in with her and found myself a job at the place that she was working at. She recommended me to her boss and he hired me that same week. So now I had a really cool girlfriend, a good job, and we were suddenly living together. It seemed like something that only happened in movies, but here I was living it. We lived with each other for around three years. Everything was going great until Felicia showed up in our lives. Susan found this girl at the mall and became friends with her and started bringing her over to the house. At first I liked her, but as she started coming over more and more, I started to see how she really was. She would constantly belittle me and act like I wasn't supposed to talk to her because she was superior to me. It felt really bad, and I was always glad when she left. Susan never said anything about it or reacted to her treating me like that, which was strange to me. I'm guessing she felt she couldn't get into the middle of it, but she was the one inviting that horrible person into the house. After a while, Felicia's boyfriend broke up with her after a fight that they had, and she begged Susan if she could stay there for a while. Susan broke and told her yes and I wasn't even asked. I get that Susan was the one who moved in here first and all that, but I was paying half the bills and rent, and I probably should have gotten at least an opinion. Felicia moved in and took over a room. What was only supposed to be a month turned into a six-month period. The whole time I was belittled and mentally abused by Felicia, and I even talked with Susan about it who would only hmm at the situation. I didn't want to make this a problem between her and her friend, but I was getting stepped on every day and it was starting to really stress me out. Nothing was ever done about this, so I moved out into my own place. I never broke up with Susan, but maybe it could have worked if we lived in different places. It turns out it would have worked if Felicia didn't poison her mind about me. She told Susan all kinds of horrible things about me that weren't true and Susan started becoming distant. Eventually, Susan moved on without another word, and I never saw her again. We didn't break up, and we didn't have any fights. I feel like that's worse than having one huge fight, and then it all ending suddenly. It hurt a lot, but I tried my best to move on and find someone else. So, I met someone else on Tinder that was 23, had red hair, and was taller than I was. Her name was Kayla, and looking back, she was kind of a snob. At the time, I didn't see it, but she knew that she could have any man that she wanted, and she chose me. During our relationship, she used the hole in my chest from losing my friend, Susan, against me. She used my grief to try to make me into some sissy beta, and I've never tried labeling myself as anything like that. To me, all that stuff is meaningless. I loved Kayla, and I moved in with her because she had that charm and I was blinded by it. At the time, I could easily put aside the mental abuse to be with her, and look for the best in her. But as time went on, my tolerance for the hitting got less and less. No, it wasn't only the mental abuse. She'd hit me and laugh about it. I'd never hit her back, I'd just take it and move on. What started out as sort of a playful thing turned into a full-on barrage, and sometimes when she was mad, she'd take it out on me, telling me that I was her emotional punching bag. 
I don't know why I took that for so long. But one day I just had enough. I took my things and I left, in search for another place of my own. I knew that I didn't deserve any of that, and I wouldn't be a punching bag anymore. At some point I woke up and I thought I deserved better. Maybe it's what I needed to distract me from my depression, but either way it should not have happened. So once I moved away, Kayla started contacting me through most of my social media accounts. I told her exactly what I thought. She asked me why we couldn't be together, and I told her I was tired of the abuse and I wasn't coming back. She threw a fit, and I blocked her after telling her what she was doing was the reason why. Maybe I got the point across to her, but she didn't stop there. She found out where I lived through a girl named Felicia. I'm not sure if it was the same one who ruined my relationship with Susan or not, but I'm pretty sure she spotted me at home, and it was her. Kayla started showing up at my house. When I opened the door to see who it was the first time, she barged in and sat down on my couch like she lived there. I told her we were done and she needed to leave, but she turned on the snobbiness that she was usually known for and tried to make my words seem insignificant. Well, now this was my house, and no one could tell me what to do or how to be. I told her if she didn't leave, I'd call the cops and make her leave. She started to hit me, and then told me if I called the cops on her, I'd be sorry. I got her to leave, but she sat outside in her car for over an hour. Once I walked out there, I told her that she needed to be away from my house and stop bothering me. Her snobbiness came out once more before driving off. She came back over to my house a few times after that, but only briefly and only to squeal her tires in front of my house. I was pretty much left alone after that, but I decided that was enough for me for a long time. It's been quite a few years and I'm still single. The memories of those times still hurt, but at least I have my dude friends still around. The next girl I probably meet won't be on Tinder. I'm not sure if Tinder had anything to do with matching me with these types of people, but I don't think I want to try again to test that theory out. I'm a 20 year old female, and this happened last year. I worked at a gas station with another girl, and talk about all the time how we're single and wanting to date some guys, but we never really had any experience in this. She wanted a guy who would ultimately become a sugar daddy to her, and I wanted somebody I could marry. The usual stuff, you know. So she introduced me to an online app called Tinder, and I would said I'd give it a try. I put it off for a very long time because in reality, neither of us had too much time to really be dating. When I did finally try it, I found it to be like any other social media app. You had a bunch of people on there trying to hook up. Most of them just wanted a date and a prize at the end, but I found a guy named Josh. He was the first one I talked to that didn't respond with hey babe or something stupid like that. He told me that he worked for a fast food chain as a manager in the same city, so I've probably seen him before. This made me drop my guard, but I should have known better, of course. He was coherent to say the least, unlike all the other guys that I briefly talked to. I told him I would come into the restaurant that he said he worked at and see if we recognized each other by our profile pics alone. The very next day I went into the restaurant and he instantly knew who I was. He called me out by name as if I was just another person that he knew coming into order. Later on that day, he messaged me about seeing me in the restaurant and thought it would be a good idea to meet someplace else for a drink. We met each other at a bar downtown and he bought all of my drinks that night. After that I thought I was actually ready to get to know him. I told my co-worker about him and she encouraged it. She still had yet to find anyone herself. I invited Josh out to a friend's night out with a few of my friends. We went to a few bars around the area that night. 
I was really wanting all night to ask him if he would be open to dating, but I got my answer when he started hitting on one of my friends. My night was pretty much ruined after that, so I swallowed a few more drinks. After that night, I stopped talking to him as much. He would occasionally message me with, what happened to you? I eventually told him that he seemed more interested in my friend than me, so I thought I'd just find someone else. He got a little angry at that, and tried to tell me that he was just talking to her. But I saw where his hands were. They were on her. I didn't feel comfortable dating some guy if they were going to act like that towards my friends. I had to block him because he was starting to say some pretty mean things to me. So after all that, he looked me up on Facebook and Instagram to try to talk to me again. I blocked him on those as well. I'd never told him where I worked because it never came up in conversation, but somehow he found me and the exact time I was there. He rolled up one morning to the gas station and just sat outside and stared at me. My coworker mentioned the guy had been there for a few hours, but I tried my best to ignore him. He came in a little while later and never bought anything. He just acted like he was looking for something and then started flirting with my coworker before leaving. I don't know if he was trying to make me jealous or not, but it did kind of piss me off. He tried to make other profiles on Facebook and friend me, but I knew it was him. He did everything in his power to try to get a hold of me, and I wouldn't have any of it. Most days of the week, he would just sit outside in the parking lot and stare at me while I worked. I didn't know why he was being so persistent, but I was starting to think he was trying to stalk me. I talked to my coworker about it and pointed him out as the guy that I was seeing. She told me to just tell him to leave me alone, so she really wasn't helpful. I went home that afternoon and saw him outside my house. I couldn't have him stalking me at my house, so I finally messaged him. He said he was waiting for me to come back around to him. I told him I was talking to someone else now and he needed to move on. He kept insisting that I'd come back to him or he'd have to get up in my face. He was still outside my house so I called the police. The police rolled around the corner a few minutes later and he creeped down the street while they followed him. He messaged me a few hours later asking if I had called the police. They pulled him over and told him that he needed to go home since he had no business in that neighborhood. A few more times after this, he showed up at my work, but then he kind of just stopped. I tried to avoid him as much as possible, and I guess he got bored of waiting because he'd figure I'd never come around or found someone else to stalk. Hopefully Josh found someone who can handle his obsessive personality, because I knew I couldn't. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind, Who is that you? behind you?